Welcome to the Midlife Career Rebel, the podcast created for high achieving professional women to gain the clarity, confidence, and courage they need to go after and get the life and career they want. I'm your host, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh, lawyer, social scientist, brand strategist, executive coach, entrepreneur, and midlife career rebel. Each week, you'll learn strategies to manage your mind, navigate the challenges of midlife, and take control of your career so you can thrive doing the work you love. So if you're ready to tear up that rule book and create your own, you're in the right place. And I can't wait to show you how. Hey Rebels, I am so glad you're here and checking out another amazing episode of the podcast. And I'm really excited today because we're talking about something I absolutely love and what I do, coaching. And if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I'm a coach, but to be clear, I'm a master certified executive and leadership coach for high achieving professional women in midlife who are looking to pivot, transition, or advance in their careers. And I'm also a certified personal brand strategist helping my clients to develop a compelling professional and digital presence that positions them as the sought after authority in their field. Now, coaching has evolved over the years, and in the past, hiring, for example, a career coach meant that your performance was deficient and needed some improvement. So the focus was all about your rehabilitation. And career coaches were also popular and found in university career centers. You probably went through them when you were in school, or they were made available often to employees who were being laid off and needed to find new work, or they were relocating, and they were made available to maybe spouses who were relocating so they can figure out how to find something in the area in which their spouse would have moved to. Now, over time, executive coaches have become popular as really a developmental tool to help high potential leaders who were earmarked for a promotion into the C-suite to fine tune their skills and position themselves for success. But as I mentioned, these were special experiences. They were what I call velvet rope experiences, meaning only high level executives would be allowed to access that level of support. And it was a well kept secret. In fact, I would say in a lot of ways today, most people, when they think of an executive coach, think that they're only allowed for executives, not realizing that executive and leader co- leadership coaching is available to anyone in their career. And that a lot of that has really changed over time. Also, I want to say that life coaches, and I'm also certified as a life coach, but I, a life the part of life I specialize in is usually career and leadership. But once upon a time, they were looked upon and as a dubious profession, right? They've gained a strong footing over time as really a reputable profession with the emergence of exceptional top tier training programs and with a lot of life coaches making massive differences and transformation in people's lives, as well as the popularity of people using life coaches in the movies and in the media. And while people still use career coaches like to land their next job or fine tune their resumes, for example, It's the smart, savvy careerist who seeks out the support of an executive life coach to help them gain clarity on their direction, navigate organizational culture, overcome obstacles, and create goals and objectives to get ahead and to get what they want. It's no longer a velvet rope experience. And in many cases, the organization will pay for the services of an executive coach. But if the company isn't paying, how do you know if investing in coaching is right for you? Now, listen, it is both an investment of time and money. In fact, some executive coaches can run up to $50,000 a year, but the investment in time and money is really an investment in you and your future. So how do you know if it's right for you? Well, let me first say, and yes, I am biased, that I believe everyone needs a coach. And let me further say that probably those that you often admire and look to as a role model or an example in your own life and career, I'm going to tell you they've had a coach. They probably had more than one coach who have supported them in achieving everything that you so admire that they've achieved. Now, whether or not to invest in coaching, first of all, requires you to get over the initial thought that many women who are who aren't familiar with making such investments in themselves, which is the thought, I can figure this out all on my own. Now, I call it the I can do it all by myself syndrome. And I, too, suffered from this syndrome before I invested in and hired my first coach. Then I spent the whole year wondering what the hell took me so long 
and where I would have been had I hired a coach sooner. Now, once I understood that asking for support didn't diminish my brilliance, my capability, my strength, my smarts, and anything else that made me who I was, then the world of possibilities opened up to me. When I realized that I'm incredibly successful and smart and capable, but that has nothing to do with getting support or seeking support, everything in my life became a lot easier. Now, the truth is coaching is available to anyone who wants to improve their lives. And I mean every aspect of their lives, including their careers, which happens to be my focus. I mean, why do you think people like Serena Williams or Simone Biles or any of the top level athletes that you've seen have a coach in the first place? You guessed it, it's to improve, to get better, to be able to be at the top of their game. They never sat around and said, I can figure this out all on my own. After all, I've been doing this for a while now. No, that's crazy. The problem with diagnosing and trying to solve your own issues is that you're too close to the situation. And most likely, you have not spent the time gaining awareness of your own self-sabotaging patterns. And you haven't been trained on how to manage your mind, for sure. I know that for a fact. There's nothing out there that teaches you how to take inventory of your own self-sabotaging patterns or to understand the way your brain works and how it may be impeding your process and your ability to get what you want. That's why top athletes invest in the best coaching they can find. That's why even Serena Williams knows how to play, even though she knows how to play tennis, she still hires coaches, whether it's to improve that wicked backhand of hers or to level up her game or to manage her mind, honing it to become the mindset of a champion. Now, studies have shown over and over again that women are less likely than men to ask for help or even to ask for what they want. We've been socialized from an early age not to prioritize our own interests and to focus instead on the needs of others. The messages we receive growing up from parents, teachers, other children, the media and society in general have been so powerful that now that we're grown, we've been unconscious to this internalized conditioning, even while we're perpetuating it. Now, the obvious reasons to ask for the support, to ask for what you want, to get a coach is if you're prepping for a pivot, a move or a change in your life or you're struggling with something. But the truth is you don't have to be in trouble or struggling to hire a coach. In fact, everything could be going quite well in your life. In fact, when I got a coach, I was doing well. I just knew there were some blind spots and things that I needed to learn about and overcome to do better. Listen, you may be living your best life at let's say a seven and a half or eight out of 10. But just imagine for a moment what your life and career could be if you were a 10 out of 10. Hell, if you were a 12 out of 10. What are you leaving on the table that you don't even know? In what ways are you settling for good enough? And by the way, I did an entire podcast episode about the dangers of settling for good enough. So be sure to check that out. But what if only a few simple tweaks to your thoughts, mindset, feelings, and behaviors could take you, your life, and your career from ordinary to extraordinary. Now, we're not trained to see our own blind spots and limitations, particularly because we've been living comfortably within them for well over 30 or 40 years, some of us longer. That's why one of the best gifts I ever gave myself was a gift of an objective observer who helped me to see the hundred different ways I was playing small, holding on to old patterns, narratives, and limiting beliefs, and failing to step into my full potential, even when I was already successful from societal standards. Listen, I primarily coach successful women, but that doesn't mean they don't need support to confidently talk through specific issues regarding their team or their boss or that they don't need support as they transition into a new role or into a senior level of leadership, or support in negotiating their salary for a new position or a raise for an existing one, or to gain greater confidence while overcoming self-doubts or imposter syndrome, to unravel old patterns and habits so they can show up powerfully in the world, or to create boundaries and manage their time to prevent further burnout and overwhelm and create greater efficiency to achieve the results they want. 
Listen, when talking to your peers isn't enough, when your mentor or sponsor is only focused on strategy and can't help you with the day-to-day mindset work, when you've read the leadership books, attended the conferences and listened to the podcast, and you're still stuck and lack clarity on the next best direction in your career, when you're thinking, I don't wanna be dealing with this same issue, with this same shit, or be in the same place a year from now, then that's when you wanna consider getting a coach. Now, check out the episodes where I interviewed some of my clients about the results that they got from coaching and why they sought out coaches to begin with. It may be really insightful for you just to hear another person's perspective. Now, while I share just a few reasons why you should decide to invest in coaching, let me also be super clear on what coaching is not. Now, unlike going to a doctor or a mechanic, coaches don't do the work for you, at least not this coach. The greatest gift I can give my clients is the ability to tap into and learn to trust their own wisdom, to understand how to manage their brain, and learn how to release themselves from their past so they can step into what's possible for their future. When you learn how to do that, you will always be able to get any result you want in your life and career long after the coaching engagement ends. For me, it's about mastering the inner and outer game strategies. And that's what I coach on. That's what I teach on. That's what I support my clients about. And you've heard me talk about that again and again on the podcast. And you'll continue to hear me talk about the inner and outer game strategy. The inner game, if you're new, is the mastery of your thoughts, beliefs, and feelings. The outer game is the mastery of strategies and tactics that will get you to where you want to go. We're often taught that. We often want to focus on that the tactics and strategies. But what we forget is that if we don't have the mindset, we're not gonna even implement those strategies. This is critical because if you're weighed down by limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome and false narratives, struggling with committing to what matters most to you, then you won't be able to do the work or engage in the tactics to help you achieve the extraordinary success you deserve and desire. It's not just about taking action or having an accountability buddy. All right, as I said, we've been trained to believe it only takes setting a goal and taking action on getting that goal and completing your process to get to that goal. But what happens when you feel fear and doubt and you don't take those actions, when you don't meet the goal and then you start to judge yourself for it or you fail to set goals that stretch you into what's possible or worse, you do meet the goal but at great sacrifice to your mental, emotional, and physical health, all because you never learned how to master the inner game. Now, I also believe that good coaches use proven frameworks and that they have a methodology that can help you tap into your inner wisdom while reaching new levels in your life. As a coach, I use proven frameworks in my practice to help my clients achieve their results and objectives. My inner game framework is based on a cognitive behavioral model that helps you use neuroplasticity to change your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. There's also a bit of positive psychology and appreciative inquiry that informs my work. As you may or may not know, I have a doctorate in identity development and understand human development. And so I utilize a lot of those principles in helping you tap into that inner game strategy to be successful. Now, I also have degrees in organizational development and organizational behavior, organizational communication, and a law degree that allows me to also create other models and frameworks that allow you to get the support that you need. I use what I call my AAA framework for those who are seeking the clarity on their next steps or moves in their career, which includes ascertaining information to gain that greater clarity and confidence, amplifying your brilliance so you're always a sought after choice, and activating your strategic plan to align and achieve your goals. And my Thrive Leadership Framework is used for those wanting to excel in senior leadership, and that includes the three pillars of identity, voice, and practice. Identity is understanding you, your purpose, plan, and vision. Voice is knowing your communication style, emotional management, and visibility. And practice is about establishing boundaries, creating a management practice that's aligned with who you are, as well as embedding adaptability and resilience to how you show up in the world. And within these frameworks, I'm also coaching often, always, constantly on how do you balance and master the inner and outer game. Now, establishing first a belief in what's possible, not simply a reliance on their past or what they've already done, is the foundation of what I do. 
Again, I recommend listening to what my clients had to say about my frameworks and methods to give you greater insight to know if coaching is right for you. And in particular, if coaching with me is right for you. So maybe now with all of this information, you've been able to answer the question, is coaching right for you? And I hope that you've said yes, whether it's with me or with whoever else you decide to choose that's aligned for you. All I'll say is you want to make sure you have a coach that's all about helping you see you're perfect and fabulous just the way you are, that you're not something to be fixed. You just need greater awareness to achieve your desire and to do something new. That's all about holding space for you to listen to your own voice and tap into your internal wisdom that has always been there. That's all about helping you learn how to trust and prioritize yourself and follow through with your commitments to yourself. That's all about helping you turn what's keeping you up at night into what gets you up every single morning. And that's exactly what I'm all about. Now, if that sounds about right for you, then I invite you to book an exploration call with me. Together, we'll explore your needs and whether this is the right path for you. There's still time before I close down for the year to be able to hop on a call with me and to have a conversation about how we can proceed to support you in achieving the goals and desires that you have for yourself and your career. Or if you're ready to get going and you already know, yes, coaching is right for me, then go ahead and fill out the application and let's go to work. I'll drop all the links in the show notes so you can find them easily. Listen, that's it for today, Rebels. I hope you found this episode really eye-opening and informative and gave you something to really think about as you continue to step into the next iteration of your life and career. I know I'm a coach and I talk about a lot of things, but I want you to understand the power of coaching, why I believe in coaching, and why I think you need to invest in it yourself if you haven't found one that works for you. Until next time, my friends, have an amazingly rebellious week, and I'll see you soon. Hey, if you're loving what you're learning on the podcast, then you've got to come check out the Career Rebel Academy. It's where you'll get the individual help and support you need applying the concepts and strategies you're learning here and so much more. You'll be joined by a community of other rebels just like you, and I'll be there as your guide every step of the way. If you're genuinely looking to change the course of your life and career, I promise you, this is the place you'll want to be. Just go to www.carolparkerwalsh.com forward slash career dash rebel dash academy. I can't wait to see you there.